Hello friends. In this session, we are going to discuss inorganic qualitative analysis, which we also call salt analysis in our day-to-day -day language. This topic also forms an important part of your practical chemistry. So whatever we are going to discuss in this chapter, you can try that out in your labs as well. When we talk about qualitative analysis, the first thing that comes in our mind is what exactly is this science related to. Qualitative inorganic analysis is that branch of analytical chemistry which determines the elemental composition of inorganic compounds. The substance which is to be analyzed is first converted into solution. It is treated with various reagents in a specific sequence to test for the characteristic reactions of certain ions which react selectively and bring about visibly detectable changes such as color change, effervescence, precipitate formation, etc. Precipitation reaction and complexation reaction are the two most common type of reactions used for this purpose. So the process of qualitative analysis of a given sort can be divided into three parts. The first is the preliminary test which gives us an indication of the ions that may be present in the salt and then we carry out the confirmatory test for anions or acid radicals as well as the confirmatory test for cations or basic radicals to confirm the presence of the ions which have been indicated in preliminary tests. So let's start with preliminary tests. What exactly are these tests? how they are conducted and what can be expected from these tests. Preliminary tests are a series of tests which give a preliminary indication of the anions or cations present in the salt. These ions are then to be confirmed by the confirmatory tests. There are a few tests which are classified as preliminary tests. They are checking the physical appearance of the salt, dry heating test, charcoal cavity test, Cobalt nitrate test, flame test, borax bead test, dilute acid test and concentrated sulfuric acid test. We will take these tests one by one and see exactly what is the procedure of these tests and what are the results that are obtained from them. So preliminary investigation starts with checking the physical appearance of the given salt. This involves examination of the physical properties of the salt, such as color, smell, density, etc. For example, the salts of copper second iron are blue or bluish green in color. The salts of chromium iron are usually dark green. Salts of ferric iron are yellowish brown, whereas the salts of manganese second iron are light pink and earthly. The salts of Mercury ion, barium and lead second ion are heavy whereas the salts containing carbonate group are generally fluffy in nature. There are many salts such as zinc nitrate, zinc chloride, magnesium chloride etc. which are hygroscopic and start absorbing moisture when they are kept in air. After observing the physical characteristics of the given salt follows the dry heating test. As the name itself indicates, it involves heating of a small amount of the salt in a test tube. This test is based on the principle that the salt will undergo decomposition due to heating and some characteristic changes may take place. So these characteristic changes may be evolution of gases, some particular color of the residue left after heating, decrepitation and loss of water of crystallization. Certain types of salts release gases on heating. For example, the hydrated chlorides give hydrogen chloride on heating. One of the examples of this type of hydrated chlorides is hexahydrated zinc chloride. In sulfite salts and some sulfates give sulfur dioxide on thermal decomposition. For example, zinc sulfite and tin sulfate. Then there are certain nitrates which give nitrogen dioxide he on heating such as lead nitrate. These gases can be further detected by carrying out certain 
simple test which we are going to discuss later. The color of the residue left after heating the salt also gives us an important indication about the ions present in that salt. For example, zinc salts give yellow residue when hot and white residue when cold. It is because of the reason that zinc salts, for example, zinc carbonate when heated will form zinc oxide which appears yellow when hot and white when cold. Carbon dioxide is released along. Lead nitrate gives yellow residue due to the formation of lead oxide. Nitrogen oxide and oxygen are also formed. Hydrated copper sulfate gives white residue due to the formation of anhydrous copper sulfate as it loses its water of crystallization. Another observation in dry heating test is decrepitation. There are certain crystalline salts such as lead nitrate and barium nitrate in which mother liquor is still trapped in their crystal structure. So when they are heated, their crystal structure crumbles and a crack-like salt is produced due to that crumbling. Another important observation is loss of water of crystallization. There are salts such as phosphates, borates, etc. which swell on heating due to the loss of water of crystallization. As we also saw in the case of copper sulfate that the color change may also be produced if a hydrated salt is converted into anhydrous salt. The next type of preliminary test is the charcoal cavity test. This test involves mixing of the salt with sodium carbonate and then heating the mixture on a block of charcoal in a reducing flame. This test is based on the principle that the salt is converted into carbonate on reaction with sodium carbonate and then on heating the carbonate of the salt it gets converted into its oxide which appears as residue. The residue may have a characteristic color giving us an indication about the iron present in the salt. For example, zinc salts. On reacting with sodium carbonate, zinc carbonate is obtained which on heating gives zinc oxide and carbon dioxide is released. Zinc oxide is yellow or white in color depending on the temperature. So we can say that yellow or white residue may indicate the presence of zinc ions in the salt. Similarly, silver salts leave a shining white bead. The residue of cupric salts are in the form of red scales. Lead salts leave a white bead as the residue and bismuth salts have yellow colored residue. The next preliminary test is the cobalt nitrate test. This test is an extension of the charcoal cavity test. If the residue obtained in the charcoal cavity test is white in color, 1 to 2 drops of cobalt nitrate solution is added to that residue and is heated. It is based on the principle that some salts form double oxides with cobalt oxide which is formed due to the decomposition of cobalt nitrate. These double oxides may have some characteristic color. So aluminium salts when form a double oxide with cobalt oxide form a blue mass which is known as Thernault's blue. Similarly, zinc salts form a green mass known as Rinman's green and Magnesium salts form a pink mass.